What's up, brother? How are you? Hey, brother. Thanks for having me on board. How's that go? That little, little mic closer. test. Um, it's all right. It should be sweet. As long as you can hear hear you, you should be eats. Yeah, it sounds oh, I'm not trying to bring it closer. Hang on. What I'll, oh, hang on. Right? No, here you go. Go there. Yeah, how does that sound? That's yeah, better. that's better. Sweet. Easy. Um, yeah, man. Sick setup. Um, first potty you've done up here. Is that correct? Yeah, bro. I started it before I moved up and just... Been here, what, it's April now? Been here, well, I got here in January. So yeah, just right. F- fucking around, and the other apartment that we're at was just shit. You couldn't really feel nothing there. So finally got a house and sorted, all that sorted, and starting to get some guests on. So you're the first one since I've been up here, bro. What an honour. <laughs> no, nah, man, I like, I've got my own potty, and obviously I just do probably 90% Zooms. Mm. Um, but, man, it's so much different when you've got that face-to-face connection. Like, yeah, 100 and I don't know. It's just like I wish I could have every guest just face to face. Yeah. But obviously, it's very hard when you're doing guests, you know, interstate. Yeah. And even worldwide, you yeah. know what I mean. So. Yeah, yeah there's something cool. different about like that intimate conversation where you hear exactly the way that they're talking. There's no cutting each other off. It's just that eye to eye contact. It's it's like it's a deep, like more deep than normal conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent, man. How's the podcast going, bro? If I could do anything. I would do this. Full time? Yeah. I honestly. literally said the exact same to someone. Like, I would do this and guest speak around the world. Yeah. Um, or motivational speaking. Yeah. Um, it's it's a goal. Like, it can happen. 100. I think you just got to grow it, get exposure, and get good, interesting stories on board. 100%, bro. There's something, like I said, there's something about that. You, there's very few um, situations where you get to sit down with someone and have a conversation for an hour or 90 minutes without phones going off or someone else talking, you know, it, it, you get into the deeper shit that you wouldn't ever, you know, if you, when you're making small talk with someone, you don't have those conversations. Um, so yeah, I love it. Yeah, man, it's different. Like actually I'll say it on mine, like some of my closest friends now are people that I've just interviewed on my podcast. Like the connections you build are just unreal. And then when people listen to those episodes, their friends then connect with you and 100%. it's like a, it's a trickling effect man yeah it's like everyone I, I associate with now is like in a podcast or associated with mental health or yeah. it's crazy it's good bro you attract <coughs> what you put out though too so like if you're talking about that stuff naturally the universe will give you people around you that are interested in that stuff too you know what i mean it's just a cumul- cumulative effect of it so it's good um bro We've only, like, what have we known? We've gone back and forth a little bit on social media and stuff before I moved up. We've only sort of met each other once. So I'm keen to understand, you know, the man the man that you are behind the Instagram, behind, you know, what people see away from, you know, your social media and whatever. So um, who are you? Where are you from? Yeah, brother. I know it's a bit weird, hey? Like, we, we did that first session straight up and then we both just got busy schedules. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's... I, I rarely see anyone, to be honest. Dogs are barking. D- dogs are barking <laughs> in the background. So, sorry if you guys can hear that shit. We're doing a little bit of an outside potty at the moment, so you might hear some dogs barking and some birds chirping, but just adds to the effect. We've got it all happening. It's real. It is. <laughs> um, yeah, so Jackson Tippett, man, 27 years of age. Um, I'm an online coach, would be what you'd call my main job. And then on the side, I do like a lot of brand modeling work. Um, That can range from anything to clothing, uh, skincare, just whatever, you know, wants to be marketed or, um, is that all right? Sorry, guys, we had to pause there for a little bit. Dogs did not stop barking. Sorry, keep going, bro. What were you saying? (laughs) (laughs) Sit down. Sorry. Um, Yeah, so that can range from anything. Basically, any any brand that wants to be advertised and seen through me, I do a lot of a lot of work with that. Mm. And then on the side, I do my podcast, which is just a hobby, mm. but it's something that I want to get paid for. And pa- payment isn't the it's the byproduct, mm. but obviously, I'd love to do it full time mm. and um, just get the message out there more, man, and help people through basically the journey I've been through. Um, like I've been through a lot mm. in my life, and I feel like. Um, Anyone can overcome anything and anyone can be a new version of themselves and with little tips and tricks and, you know, the right type of connections and circle, I believe you can really be what you want in life and that's kind of the message I want to get out there. For sure, bro. Um, you said that you've been through a lot in life, so if, if you can, let, let's talk about where you're from. Where'd you grow up? Yeah, so I'm from country Victoria. Wow. Um, actually, Horsham. Yeah, you know where's, Horsham? Nah, where's that? Nah, so near Ballarat, yep. Geelong. Yeah. 
Um, so I actually grew up on a farm. Okay, same, bro. <laughs> same, I'm a country Yeah, boy. literally, like, my dad was a shearer. Okay. Um, and, like, yeah, I was full, like, farm boy. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we moved up to Gold... Um, sorry, not Gold Coast, Noosa. Yeah. Oh, it would have been 12 years ago. Just such a better lifestyle, weather. How, how old were you then? I think I was about seven. What was zero to seven like for you? Man, it was unreal. I wish I could go back there. Yeah. There was no... Man, like we we take it for even school. Like I look back at school, and I used to think of school as a chore. Yeah, man, I look back at it now, and I'm like, we had it so easy. Yeah, we literally sat in class. We we hung with our mates every day. We got lunch breaks. Like we didn't have any worries. Not and a worry in the world, bro. Now, and I used to think it was like even like teachers. I look back at it now. It was really funny. I had a dream that I was like, I used to hate teachers. And now I'm like, all they wanted to do was help me. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah. And imagine, imagine dealing with 30 little fuckwits yeah. in the classroom. Like, it'd be a nightmare. Crazy. But, yeah. um, yeah, man, like, childhood was very, I loved it, like, from what I remember. Yeah. Um, I was very active, uh, very into sport, AFL and basketball. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did that pretty much from, you know, my, you know, 10 to 20 was very sport related. Yeah. All I liked at school was PE. Mm. Uh, it's the only subject I actually cared about. And, um, yeah, when I when I kind of shifted into the, the fitness um, and gym scene was probably throughout my teens in high school. Yeah. My, my colleagues and my friends were training. Yeah. I actually was never really into it. And then I just started yeah, going to the gym on a lunch break and, man, it just grew into a massive obsession. Yeah, how, it would have been a big culture <laughs> shock. I think anyway, coming from like where did you say Horsham? Was that yeah, like, Horsham to go or to Noosa. What was that like? Literally one one end of the spectrum to the other. other like yeah. sh- shit weather down there, hot up here. But man, I just reckon everything up here is just a hundred times better. And I'm yeah. not just saying that. Yeah. Like you know yourself when you wake up and it's pissing down rain, or you wake up and it's sunny. Yeah. Is your mood different? Changes, I guarantee changes you it is. the whole course of your day if 100%. you let it. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm a big believer of like. Um, even who you surround yourself with, mm. um, the environment, everything, it's just, it's a, it's a make or break to who you are yourself. Yeah. Massively. So you move up to the Goldie from country Victoria. What was, um, what was high school like? Man, high, high school was good. Um, I, I didn't care about school to be honest though. I was, um, not, ac- not academic at all, man. I, I'm pretty straight up. I probably got D's and everything. Um, was that I, out of not trying or just didn't give a fuck? A bit of both, man. I'm actually really not good with, um, what do you call it? Like, like literacy sort of stuff? Yeah, I'm not even good with just, I get off focus very quick. Yeah, concentration. I'm very practical. Yeah. Yeah. So I couldn't just sit there and read and write all day. Like, yeah. it's just, I never could think of anything worse than going to uni. Mm. So I just kind of believed and backed my gut and just did my own thing. And, um... Yeah, I didn't really care about school and then I always trusted my gut that I, you know, I would have a career in what I love, which was something to do with fitness. Yeah. I wasn't sure what it was going to be um, until later on, but I just I just enjoyed life and then I, it's probably as only as of the last four years I've actually taken like business serious and man, it skyrocketed. Yeah, 100% bro, that's good. Um, so coming out of high school, what was the plan? Um, so obviously I complete, I started my cert three and four in fitness. Yep. Um, even that was a big shock to me, man. Like having to study and having oh, to do bro. work. Like even the, um, what do you call it? The, where you have to know all the muscles and that. Like the um, anatomy. 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 Yeah. That was fuck, bro. Like yeah. the anatomy really did my head in, but, um, I, I'm grateful for it cause I learned a lot out of it. Mm. And then I was like, once I completed, I was like. I can do this. Like I can be, you know, a PT, which was my first goal, which is nothing fancy, but um, yeah, became a PT. Uh, I was just like any PT, to be honest. And there's only so much you can do as a PT. Yeah. You know, paying rent, um, working long hours. You know, so many other PTs you got to compete against. Um, clients always cancelling on you. Fuck, the list goes on, man. So I did that for you know the space of three years. Enjoy- is that still in Noosa? Um, no, throughout Gold Coast, yeah. Brisbane and Noosa, I've, I've kind of lived a bit of everywhere, to be honest, yeah. mainly with my exes. Um, and then, I don't know, man, I was kind of like oh, dipping into social media yeah. 
And I'll be honest, I looked up to Joseph Rakic. Yeah, he's the OG. And Zach Smith. Yeah. Zach Smith used to be the OG too. Yeah. And he's a goldie boy, yeah? Yeah, but he yeah. Uh, he travels the world now. Yeah, yeah, lives in fucking Tulum or wherever. Yeah, but um, I actually still talk to Joseph. He was probably the main reason I started this. Yeah. Um, And I was just looking at them. I was looking at their stories. I was looking at their page and I was like, this is fucked. Like, how can they live? Like, they live the life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, all they do is they do online coaching, they travel the world, they look good, they're always putting sick stories up. Yeah. And I don't know, I literally was just like, I manifest on them, like, I want to do that. Like, that is what I want to be. Bro, I have the exact same thing. My my guys was for Steve Cook and, oh, Cook, and, and, yeah. and Rob Lipset. I remember sitting, in, I, was, I studied at uni, did construction management, and I was sitting at home, like, on a day off, and I was watching it on YouTube. Like, it was the first time I'd ever come across it. Yeah. And I, well, I reckon I watched it for a day straight, and then I said to myself, I'm doing this. Yeah. This is, this is what I'm going to do. Literally. And, and I knew from then that that's what I was going to do. I always loved fitness, but I'd never done it as a job. I was like, as soon as I seen that and seen that lifestyle they lived, I was like, yep, that's me. Yeah, it's, it's so funny, man. And people say, like, you don't realise how many people look up to you. Yeah. Like, even myself, like, I have days where I'm like, oh, I'm not even helping anyone or I'm I'm, I'm not worth it, you know what I mean? But then, the syndrome, bro. Bro, then I get these fucking DMs and, like, you'd be shocked how many eyes are on you, like, with social media. And, um, yeah, I I just literally, I went straight in and I was like, I'm just going to transition from PT to online. And, obviously, it was a massive process. Like, it doesn't just happen overnight. But everything kind of led from one thing to another. Like, as my online coaching grew... And then as my physique got better, I then kind of got modeling jobs. And then that kind of ticked off into other areas. And then that led me into wanting to speak into my podcast. Mm. And it's kind of like everything just works together. Yeah. So, yeah. So the, the modeling and the stuff like that, um, did that all just sort of happen organically? Or did you have it in your head, fuck, this is what I want to do? Or you just started posting and shit just started coming from it? Literally would never... I don't even like the word model because I don't think I'm a model. You yeah. know what I mean? Like... Yeah. Uh, I think I have a unique look yeah. and I think that's why I get a lot of work yeah. is obviously I'm pretty much covered in tattoos. I, You know what I mean? Let's I'm talk just, about them. Man, fucking once again, I never never wanted a tattoo. Everything's just so weird in life, bro. Like yeah. I never wanted one. I was so against them. And then actually I got another idol. So everything I've got is because of someone. You know yeah. Commando Steve? Bro, I, I he's <laughs> so my girlfriend and her family train with him. Yeah. I've trained with him. He's a legend. Bro, legend. absolute legend. Yeah. So no joke, the reason I got my first tattoo was he had he has the, the shoulder the Japanese, to there. Japanese, yeah. I was looking at him, even Shannon from Biggest Loser. Yeah. I used to watch it a lot. And I was like, man, that, that looks really good on a fit guy. Yeah. Just just one sleeve. And then I went and got it done and I was like, bro, this is this is sick. <laughs> just parents, got addicted. parents were like, What are you doing? And then I was like, I don't know, man. I went to Thailand. I did a few trips in Bali. Yeah. I swear to God, man, I, I pretty much come back with a full full body. Yeah. And I was just like, wow, like I went overboard. Yeah. <laughs> so it all happened quick, pretty quick. Bro, I actually got like, you know how people get their back done and it's like, oh, I'll get like 36 sessions. Yeah. Bro, one day. Yeah. One day in Bali. In Bali. <laughs> two days for my leg. Yeah. Two days for the other leg. Like I was pretty much- just got it done, pumped it out. Pretty much covered in two weeks total. Yeah. Um. And then I do regret a lot of them. Like Why? I don't, I don't like how much I have, yeah. but I can't, it is, it's, it's not, you know what I mean? You can't, I shouldn't say regret, but I wish I could go back and yeah. just get less tattoos. I think the things about that, bro, is that I always see it as at one point in your life, it was the right thing for you. Yeah. So you, you can't, you know, you can always wish, but you can't wish you, you just got to say, you know what, at that time I wanted it. So yeah. this is what it is. Um, do you, why, why? So the f the first one was literally for looks. Yep. Um, I just thought it looked cool, yep. and it's just gonna s like I knew I was always gonna be fit. Yeah. So I was like, if I can maintain that fitness, I just think it'll look good. Yeah. And then from there, um, man, it's it's kind of weird. Like I don't, I don't really know why I did it. I, I wasn't really happy with my body image at one at one point back in the day. Yeah. And as silly as this sounds, this is not all my tattoos. This is just some. I was like, if I start to cover up a bit of my body, it's just going to kind of make me look better. Do you think that, wh where does that come from? Do you think comparison, comparison to people? Uh, or what do you I'm very, 
very hard on myself. Mm. I've always been hard on myself. Um, and yeah, I, I just think, and this is the fuck thing about social media is we look up to so many people like top end models or influencers or whatever. Yeah. And we, j- we compare ourselves to them, but we can't, man. And I yeah. used to do this every I'm, day. I'm shocking for it. We can't do it though, man. Yeah. We, you literally, you're never going to look like Steve Cook. Nah. You're never going to. It's just not going to happen, bro. Yeah. So one thing I've really learned, it's only been as of late, is you've just got to be your own unique self and you've got to love yourself. Yeah. If you don't love yourself, bro, what's the point of living? Yeah. No, 100%. That's good. No, I definitely agree with that. Massive. So, um, yeah, that's definitely a unique look, bro. Like you see the, I see like the photos from the shoots and stuff and it's just, you've got that, that, that image about you. And that's why I think that it's like you get, a lot of people going, fuck, he's this great guy, he's a great guy, because that image that comes across is like, for some people that, you know, aren't around people that have a lot of tattoos or whatever, yeah. it depicts a different thing, or straight away in their head, they think, they formulate these ideas about who you are. Um, how do you go about changing that? People's opinions? Well, <coughs> you know that, you know that, you know, the yeah. idea of the tatted up guy. Yeah. What What is your approach to people that think like that or that how do you how do you try and make yourself come across as a person yeah so obviously man i get judged a lot um and i get judged we'll dip into my past a bit more and i get judged because of that yeah still. yeah start dive into that dive into that now yeah sure um so basically i i got um i went heavy on into steroids mm. um majority of the fitness scene does to be honest yeah and I was just one to, I didn't use them to, like, I didn't want to deteriorate my health or become a bad person. I literally just used them to enhance my training. Yeah. I took training very serious. Like, I trained very hard. And I was just like, if I can recover a bit better, become a bit stronger, build a bit more muscle, like, which was my goals. Yeah. Then why don't I just throw it in? You know what I mean? Like, everyone's using it. I'm just going to throw it in. Yeah. And then it's like any drug, bro. You become addicted. I don't care what you say. If you use a drug constantly, whether it's heroin, alcohol, whatever it is, you will slowly become addicted Mm. and you'll start slowly using more or taking more. And then there comes a a downside and a side effect of every drug, which is, you know, they're usually not good. It it can be anything. It can be aggression, depression, health issues, um, all of that type of stuff. So What what was it for you? Man, I, I was, to, to be honest, the two main things was health was fucked. Like, I'm talking... Like internals? <clears throat> yeah, man. Liver and kidneys were absolutely fried. How long were you doing, like, were you, let's just say abusing it for? Um, Would you say you were abusing it? See, <laughs> I would say I was abusing it, but now I hear some of what the dosages yeah. of people are using. I'm like, fuck, I don't even think I was abusing it. Yeah. I just kind of did it for a long period. Yeah. So I wouldn't say abusing it. I just, the main thing I did wrong, I didn't get off. Yeah. So I, I always was on. On cycle, yeah. So I kind of, and I started very young. Yeah. So I, I probably started when I was 19. Yeah, that's Which very I would young. not recommend to anyone. And I'm not here to say get on steroids. Um, you know, that's not what we're trying to do. Mm. But I just want to speak the truth. And I probably went from 19 to 25. Without coming off at all. Yeah, without coming off. Fuck. So that's when, yeah, probably 24, like 25, I was just kind of... And when you were you like blasting that like whole time? No, nah, so you can't blast constantly, but I was, yeah, like it was blasting a lot and then you just sit on a little bit of test. But as you know, it's like anything, you, you become addicted. So you, you start well, to use... Li- it's like when, like, let's use fuck cocaine as an example. Yeah. First time you have cocaine, you need a little bit. If you do it for a year, yeah. you need a you need a fucking lot more to get the same effect. So yeah. it'd be the same sort of thing, yeah. And that's the thing I try to tell people now is I've still got clients that use performance enhancing drugs, but we do it in a very safe manner. And yeah. if I could go back in time, you start with the, the absolute minimal amount, mm. and then if you if you plateau, you look over your food or your training before you add drugs. 100%. But what I did was, oh, I'm plateauing. I'll up the dosage of test. Yeah. And then soon I'll add another compound. Soon you know it, bro. It's like you can't go any higher. So yeah. what, what do you do? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's when it becomes toxic. Yeah, I agree. Look, I personally, I don't 
fully understand this why there's such a negative connotation around steroids like PEDs like they have such a negative you know yeah people view them as you know oh, fuck he's on roids or he's this and that like if you do it right yeah and you're doing it properly and with a purpose and with a reason to do it I don't think there's anything wrong with it as long as you're doing it smart yeah it's just that I like you know being smart about it and having a reason to do it and like you said knowing when it's time to get off or know what's too much yeah and see that's the thing like a, a basic uh, trt dose which is like a testosterone replacement dose mm. is actually good for the body yeah like, well, especially when you get older men get older yeah. like yeah so like like i could i could get back on cycle now if that's what you want to call it mm. which would probably be just testosterone and then maybe one other compound mm. and you could do it pretty safely yeah. get your bloods done you know take your liver care and your kidney support and all of that type of stuff on it but it's just all of these other drugs that people don't know about that are harmful. Yeah, if people start jamming <coughs> fucking trenol, trenol yeah. or whatever, like like people go mad off that shit. Yeah. yeah. So th- for, for everyone listening, there's there's drugs that are meant for the body, mm. like testosterone and DECA and Anavar. But then there's all of these drugs that aren't meant for the uh, meant for the human. They're meant for like cattle and stuff. Yeah. But these are the main drugs that majority of these people on Gold Coast and other cities are taking. Yeah. And then they're throwing all in the orals too, which is absolutely deteriorating their liver. Yeah. And then they're throwing in a little bit of insulin and, bro, like it's it's, it's a not slippery good. slope, bro. Very slippery slope. Yeah. So. If anyone's listening and you think about doing it, make sure you do your <laughs> research. If you want, if there's someone you want to research. Um, Derek from more plates, more he's, he's, he, he's the best bro. Like I don't, I've never done anything myself. Na- like personally, if I was going to do a comp, I would yeah. like, I would, I'd probably do it. But like, I'd like, I just like knowing. Yeah. And like, he's the guy that, I, that I've got all my information from. So if you got, if you guys want to look at any of that stuff, Derek from more plates, more dates.com. Um, let's go back to what we're doing, bro. So you were in the, in this phase of your life where, you know, what, what was happening to you? What were the side effects that were you were experiencing? Just the health? So health, um, and it's really, th- this is the fuck thing, is I didn't feel unhealthy. Mm. So this is where people go wrong. Mm. I didn't feel unhealthy the whole six years. But it's not until I got my blood work done that the results said different. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is if, if I never got my blood work done, and for everyone listening, if you never get your blood work done... You might think you're healthy the whole the whole time you're you're blasting gear throughout your your life, like you might not get signs until your liver's done or you yeah. you need a um you need you know a kidney transplant or you have a heart attack. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is, I literally I felt healthy as yeah, especially with like, your you you're pumped up full of gear and you're like at the gym and you're smashing pbs and you're looking great like you would be thinking you're looking good you're feeling good 100 percent. and this is where it's so fucked but then i got my my bloods done and I, I don't really know all the terminology of bloods to be honest but man my my, my liver enzymes and kidney enzymes were literally elevated through the roof mm. like to the point where like another year or two i literally was done like no joke at 25 and that's when when i had that blood work done i was like Nah, this is like a big wake up call. Like, yeah. like at the end of the day, even if I have this, you know, amazing body, and I'm dead in a grave in two years, what does that mean? What, is, what was it all for? Yeah, so th- that was a tipping point too. And then obviously, um, I got done for steroids three times. Um, in terms of <clears throat> supplying them, or no, I've like never supplied and having I them. Never will. I've never been a drug dealer. I'll confirm that here. But it was all personal use. And I got done with it just in my bag. Okay. I had it in my bag because I live with my parents and I didn't want them to yeah. uh, find them. So I just got done. I got pulled up by the cops. I searched my bag, got done. Yeah. And then the other thing, I was a very, I was very lost when I was on the steroids. Yeah. I was. It, it's a drug that changes your chemical reaction in your brain. Yeah, I, I do say, believe that. All massively. Yeah. And I, I look back, man. I was a terrible person on it. And obviously, I didn't really even know what I was doing, so I just continued it. I put my steroids back in my bag, and, you know, months later, I got caught again. Mm. And then I just did it again. Yeah, so that would have been obviously disappointing for yourself and probably, I don't know, your family. 
what, what was that like? Yeah, bro, mum and mum and dad were they were on the point of breaking. Hey, like it actually caused them nearly to uh, get a divorce and a lot of tension. And I didn't really know it, even though I was still treating them like shit. And this is this is the bad thing about it, man. It's not until I actually got off that I changed and became a better person. And that, that you know they were so thankful. But it's not until just in a nutshell, it's not until I actually went to my final court case of getting done three times just with cell supply, um, that I actually got let off and I should have been jail, man. Like, 100%. It's a class one drug, so I should have went to jail. But for some reason, I didn't. And that was the main wake-up call. You know, i got to change my life around. Like, mm. God has sent me a message to, you know, he's given me another chance, like, another chance. So go do what you need to do in life and, you know, remove yourself from the crowd you're hanging around, take the drugs away and become a better person. And I did it from that day onwards. That's cool, bro. Fuck, that's yeah. good on you. A lot of people can't do that. A lot of people when they're It was in, hard. Regardless of what it is, whether it be steroids or party drugs or whatever it is, when they're that deep in it, yeah. it's fucking hard for them to get out. What 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 was it that made you different and you be able to get out of it compared to someone else that would just go back? I, I would say in my family, mm. um, just seeing them... As I started to change, just seeing them lighten up and brighten up, and even my mood change. Mm. Um, obviously, health was it was yeah. big big part of it. Yeah. But yeah, man, just the person I was becoming, I was like, I was I was shocked. Hey, like it it was crazy. But in saying that, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Coming off steroids, really? like yeah, I you would have felt went, like shit too. So I actually went through multiple phases where I got off a little bit. Yeah. And then I lied to my parents and oh, I'll just put a little bit of testosterone back in. Yeah. I did that probably six to seven times. Yeah. And you hear that a lot with like crack addicts and that. Yeah. Man, you, you, it is almost near impossible to just go cold turkey yeah. after like multiple years and never touch it once. Yeah. Especially with something like with the testosterone, because if you have been like using gear for that long, your natural test goes to nothing. Yeah. And then as as males, when we don't have test, we feel like fucking shit. Yeah. Like pure shit. Um, like even if you're you're run down, you're tired, you haven't been eating right, that's enough for your test to go down enough and that makes you feel like shit. So <laughs> if you've been doing it for that long and then you go you're completely off it, you would be in the gutter in terms of the way you're feeling. Yeah, so that's where all the other part comes into it is um you know, I s- almost depression when you get off because body dysmorphia mm. you're not as strong um but the main thing i suffered big time obviously from using for so long you know when you're putting an endogenous hormone in your body your body doesn't want to make testosterone because it doesn't have to because it goes i'm getting this in i'll shut down mm. so my system shut down and that caused um so many problems in terms of relationships um and like sexual function like Mm. i couldn't actually get an erection um that actually caused me to break up with one one of my exes Mm. um it was full on man and then you know that that comes to that plays with your head a lot and then depression and then am i not good enough and it's a whole spiral effect man so this is the thing that people listening need to understand is it's not just it's not just why you're on it's when you get off, you, you're going to suffer a lot of stuff too. So you've got to look at all the, you got to weigh up all the pros and cons before you actually decide to go down that route. Yeah, for sure. So you come off, um, life gets, wet. what does what does life look like afterwards? Now or straight well, away? Like once you were, like what what's sort of, the, what was the next sort of 12 months or whatever once you were like, okay, I'm done. What was that for you? Were, were you here on the Goldie? Yeah, just a building phase. Um, main thing I wanted to do was remove myself from the crowd I was hanging with. Mm. Um, That's a hard thing to do in itself. <laughs> that was fucking hard. Uh, the best thing I ever did, I actually changed gyms. Yep. So I was training at a big, what you'd call, a hardcore bodybuilding gym. And I literally just went to like a Jets. Yeah. And that in itself, because if, if you're constantly in a gym where people are twice your size or bigger you're going to get inclined to want to get back on. But if you go to a gym where, you know, there's old people in there and everyone's normal, you just feel, you feel fine. So you're probably not going to be inclined to get back on. So removing myself from the crowd and changing gyms is probably my two best tips that kept me off the steroids. Yeah, for sure. That's cool, bro. And then I guess once that sort of happened, 
life would have started to gradually come back or you know get better as it as it as it went on what was sort of you know in between that and where you are now what's been the biggest sort of changes and wh- what what's life like for you now yeah oh man it's fucking completely different like it's actually i mean yeah, if you knew me like off you would have been like, who's this dickhead? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was king shit, man. I yeah. just didn't care about anyone, had no morals. Um, it's just completely different, man. Like, I'm, I'm here to help people. Um, I'm actually really into mental health now. Um, man, I'm so much healthier. I'm so much happier. I, I honestly can't explain it. Like, Do you think that mindset shift of, like, going for, or having the self-awareness to go, fuck, I need to change, was just purely coming off it and getting away from it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 But, you know, this is why for everyone listening, like, I'm not saying don't get on steroids or whatever, but I can guarantee you right now, me speaking from the heart, you'll be a better person without it. Mm. That's it. Plain and simple. For sure, bro. Yeah, 100%. So everyone's obviously, yeah, you're going to be a better person when you're just, you know, your normal, unique self. Um, So you've changed from this know i guess um what was it like a obnoxious dickhead of a person to a person who's um driven by well actually what are you driven by now driven by helping people um i get a fulfillment out of helping people and changing lives mm. and that can come in so many ways yeah that can come in a physical transformation a mental um so many ways do you know what i mean but if you help someone and they appreciate it testimonials whatever it is mm. I don't know, man. That's a massive thrill. There's no better feeling, bro. Nah, when, like when someone, when someone, you get a message from someone, you, you know, talked about, or they say, that's still going. yeah, it's gone. Yeah. yeah, it's just it hasn't not facing us. <laughs> um, how much they've changed your life? Like, it's it's a feeling that you can't even like describe. Like you know, when you know you're doing something good for other someone else, bro. And it's it's fuck because I know I'm do. And this is another thing. Like you said, how do I deal with judgment or? people judging my past or haters, I don't care anymore because I know I'm doing good. Mm. I know for a fact I'm doing nothing wrong and I'm helping people. Yeah. So if you want to judge me and when you don't even know me and you've never had a conversation <laughs> based on my tattoos and my past or a Google um, article, go ahead because you know what I mean? Yeah, well, like I've say, I've say this, everyone that, anyone that listens to me would know and I've said this a million times, you'll never be judged by someone doing more than you. Right, 100%. Like, People that talk shit are probably sitting at home doing fuck all. And by the time that you have gone and done the things that you wanted to do and achieve the things that you want to achieve, they're still going to be talking shit anyway. So what the fuck does it matter now? Bro, spitting facts here. Like everyone that has ever hated on me or still hates on me, even to this day, Mm. like a DM or something, bro, it is a nobody. It is like two posts or a fake account yeah. or you know what I mean? They, they they obviously don't like their own life or they're just jealous. Well, it is, bro. That's that's where I try and go is if, the, if that person's in a shit enough place to feel like they need to go and attack you, then yeah. rather than be angry or upset at them, you got to try and be empathetic towards them and go, you know what, if you're, if I'm, if I need, if you need to do that to make yourself feel better, I, I feel sorry for the place that you're in to need to do that. 100%. Yeah. It's not like fucking Joseph Rackage is sending me DMs saying, you know what I mean? You're no. a shit cunt. Exactly like, so right, it's true, but yeah, it no is. one at the top end is like hating. No. They're just doing their game, bro. Yeah. So we we should get our um we should get a bit of credentials here for Joseph. We're shouting him out a bit. Yeah, hard. <laughs> um that's good, man. So you're a different person, right? Your values and your um your mission, I guess what we would say is now to help people. Um, you do that through your podcast and your coaching. How you, how's the how's the coaching side of it going? I've seen some people getting some pretty good results and stuff lately. What do you think? What do you? How's that all going for you? Yeah, it's good. I I'm just a I'm a very I don't know. I approach my coaching different to others. Like I'm not I'm not about numbers. I'm not I'm not even about money. Like mm-hmm. straight up. Um, obviously it's a byproduct, and obviously I need money to survive. Yeah. But that is not what's on my mind. I literally just love helping people. I love when they're like, "Fuck, Jax, you've changed my life," or. Um, you know, I've gone from eating this shit to that and I feel so much better or you've changed my relationship or there's so many things, man. And I just get a fulfillment out of that. And I have a very good connection with my clients, uh, more like family. So I, I actually speak to all my clients on a day to day basis. I'm not like a typical coach where it's just like, we'll just kind of send an email and 
we'll change your rice and add a bit of cardio and I'll see you next week. Yeah. I'm not like that. So I, I'd say I'm more of like a... a lifestyle I'm coach. A life, yeah, lifestyle coach. And I even dip into a lot into mindset, which a lot of coaches don't do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I enjoy it, man. I just, I keep it low key. I don't really advertise my stuff. I just believe word of mouth will... You know, run around and it yeah. always win, bro. Word of mouth always wins. If you if you provide good enough service, word of mouth's all you ever need. Yeah, yeah. And you know what I find really tacky is when I look up to a couple of these big online coaches and they just sit on their story every day and they're like, two spots left or five spots left or um, sign up now. It's too salesy, man. Like I, I I get turned off by that. Yeah. So I kind of do. That's what led me to do a different approach. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, that's good, bro. Um, so you've recently come back to the Goldie, yeah? You were in Noosa for how long were you up there for living there? One year. One year. Yeah. What's um what's been the biggest difference coming back? Man, there's so much more happening here. Yeah. The gyms are way better. Yeah. Like I Noosa's nice, but it's so quiet, man. Yeah. And when I got back here, like literally three weeks ago, I just felt like I had like another battery in me. Like yeah. I was like connections and I was like, you know, companies want me to come and do this and yep. even just shit like this. Like you can't do this stuff back in Noosa. There's yeah, nobody no there. Yeah. So it's just like there's more happening, bro. And yeah. to get ahead in life, I think it's it had to be done. Yeah, connections and network. Bro, that's a, that's a, one thing I wanted to ask you about and like I know a lot of people are probably asking too, bro, you, how the fuck do you find the time to engage with so <laughs> many people on Instagram? Bro, it's funny. And I'm going to be straight up. People think I I pay for services. Yeah. I can tell you right now, I've never paid for a service. Yeah. I've never bought a follower. I, if you if you receive a comment from me, it's fucking me. Yeah. I can guarantee you. Yeah. And yes, it takes a lot of time. It yeah. does. I don't know, man. I'm where'd, just, that, where'd that come from, bro? That's This is Gary V dollar $1.80 <laughs> strategy like to a T, man. Man, I just believe like, how hard is it to show some fucking love and... You know, give someone some appreciation. Like, there's not enough in the world. And I don't know. I, I know I probably go overboard. But I find I'm not doing anything wrong. No, I'm only, I'm I'm only supporting and helping people. And I'm a big believer it always comes back to you. It, it, it won't always come back with everyone. Like, no. I do support a lot of people that they take all your energy. Mm. But you'll soon learn if you support someone and they come back, that's the right person in your life. Yeah, where did this, that, it's a hard, like, from the everyday person or people that aren't self-aware, they don't understand that. Where does that sort of side of you come from? As in supporting people? Yeah, as in, like, having that attitude, having that mindset. Is that something that you've just picked up along your life or is that something that someone's taught you? No, I've just picked it up. And um, I think it's more when I used to get, when I get supported by someone yeah. or someone shows appreciation to me. Yeah. I'm like that's big respect. Like yeah. I feel really like, Fuck wow, you've like taken the time you took to, yeah. you took the time to send me a message. I don't know you from a bar of soap. Yeah. So if if I feel like that, that's the that's the effect I want you to feel. If I go and say, oh Josh, like great transformation on your client. Yeah. Like it's just straight morals, man. Yeah. Like. And, Sorry, we're sorry. getting everything. <laughs> sorry, guys. There's a fucking, there's a plane <laughs> or something going straight over the top of us. So it's probably really loud at the moment. But um, in saying that, bro, it takes a lot of time. But man, like I, I just do it sporad sporadic, sporadically. Yeah. I don't like go. Oh, I got to go comment on a hundred people's things. Yeah. Okay. I just scroll when, and when I you find the time, whatever. Yeah, I kind of just do it in phases. Yeah. And I enjoy it, man. Mm. I enjoy it because I get a lot of positivity back yeah. and I'm just all about positivity now, man. That's I cool. don't want negativity in my life. No, so. fuck. Ne yeah. neg negativity and bad energy, bro. The two biggest things that you just want to get the fuck away from. What's a day look like for you right now? Um, it, it is different every day, but a typical day is um, get up. I actually do meditation now. Mm. The old me would have been like, who is this? Is it like guided or just by yourself? No, no, it's by myself. Yeah. Um, but obviously, it started guided, and I used to do breath work. It was all guided, but once you get good at something, you do it yourself. Yeah. So it's just a little bit of meditation, and for anyone listening about meditation, it doesn't have to mean you get in a yoga pose and you sit there for a fucking hour. Meditation can be just um, going over your day and just taking a few deep breaths and just 
you know what I mean? Like it could be anything, but I do it every morning with some affirmations. Yeah. Um, I, I believe in it, man. Like people too, say bro. it's bullshit. I, I do believe in it. What you say is what you become. Mm. And after that, I have my little morning drink, uh, which is like a bit of a detox drink. Um, I'm a believer in that too. Like just flush out your system to start. Yeah. And then I always get up and I go straight to the gym. Um, I'm a big believer in starting your day with some form of exercise. Yeah. Get the body moving. The body's designed to move, not sit down. Yeah. Um, so I get to the gym and I do cardio at the gym. I just, it's just easy, man. While I do my, my 40 minutes of cardio, I do pretty much all of my messages to start, like anyone that I haven't responded to and a few emails and stuff like that, maybe put up a post. Yeah. Then I'd rip into my weight session, which is probably the the one hour of the day I don't look at my phone. Mm. Um, I literally just put it down. I don't look at it. Yeah. And I train, and I train for fun now. I really enjoy my training, and I get a lot of endorphins out of it. Yeah. So I make that six days a week, I do that. I then go home, and I do um, – I go out for another walk. I, I mean, I lo- my days are pretty active. Yeah. I go for another walk, but I'll go like along the beach or something, but I'll work. So I'll, that's when I'll do like my phone calls check-ins um, or check-ins and stuff like that. So I've just knocked off like work on both both, both spectrums. Yeah. And then I'll come back in the afternoon and, you know, I'll just relax for a bit and it'll either toss up between I'll come like literally here and do a podcast with you or I'll have someone on mine. Yeah. I pretty much do a podcast every day. Okay. Every yeah, day. Cool. So um, I usually actually do two back to back. Yeah. So it's a fair bit of a gap in my afternoon. Yeah. If it's not the podcast, it'll be a photo shoot, but they're only twice a week. Okay. So I would um, have a brand send me clothes, for example. Yeah. And then I would organize my photographer and yeah. we'd go shoot the product. Yeah. So then that's what I'd be using for my content. Okay. After that, it is, it's honestly very relaxed. Like I, about say 5 to 6 p.m. onwards, I don't do any work. Like I just, that's my time. I, I cook, I eat what I enjoy. I yeah. scroll a bit of Instagram. Um, I just do what, what I enjoy. And I, I thoroughly believe everyone should do what they enjoy every single day for like one moment. Mm. Like if you, if you don't have, if you wake up and you don't have anything that excites you for that day, Whatever that is, it could be playing with your dog. Just some you, you time. Mm. What's the point of living? Yeah, like I don't care. Like you can grind twenty four seven. You can, you know, watch all these motivational stories and get up at four a.m. But if you don't have a bit of time for yourself or do something that you enjoy, there's no point living. Yeah, I agree, bro. The only thing that I would, the only thing that I would say differently is. I don't really have much downtime, but I love what I do so much that it yeah. feels like it's like, fuck, you know, like I love, like I love this shit. Yeah, I bro. do this every day. You know what I mean? Right. So. And it's funny. Like I actually do a lot of work on, on weekends and that. Yeah. And I just fucking, it's it. I enjoy it, man. Yeah. It's easy to me. It's yeah. not a chore. Yeah. Like if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And 100%. you've heard that. It's a cliche, bro, but it's actually so true. It's so true. No, that's got unreal, bro. Well, it's good that you're back and you're healthy and you're happy. I've got a couple of questions, bro, to wrap yeah. up, yeah? Ask these to everyone. All right. Number one, what would be your death row meal? Oh, damn. <laughs> on the spot. Um, <laughs> fuck me. Man, I'm not good on these spot ones. I'm going to say um, all-you-can-eat sushi. Oh, that's good. But good sushi. Where, where's good sushi here? Have you been to Koyomi? At the star? Nah. Bro, it is the Cracker. best. Etsu? <laughs> I, I, I'm, a, I'm a sushi train guy. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I'm talking like proper Japanese. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love like, I love good Japanese yep. and like raw fish and yeah, okay. all that type I'm of not stuff. A big, not a big fan. Like I like, <laughs> I don't mind the flavor, but the, the feeling of it. All right. What would, okay, this is a two part question. What would, what advice would you give to 15 year old you if you could talk to him right now? Just enjoy the now. Um, don't be too focused on tomorrow or yesterday. Um, live in the moment and do what you truly want to do. Uh, you don't have to follow your your peers or you don't have to do something that your school friends are doing or, you know what I mean? Like you don't, a lot of people in their teens, they do drugs or they do steroids or they... Um, you know, whatever it may be, they do it because of the people they're hanging around. Mm. And I just find if you just 
do what you truly want to do and follow your own gut. I think that's the best piece of advice. Um, because yeah. a lot of people they they just do stuff to impress other people. For sure, bro, hundred percent. I smashed that one. All right, we've already already sort of touched on this, but what's your why? My why is to help people. Mm. Um, my why is to be a good human, and my why is to um. Be, be. Oh, I, I don't know how to explain it. Is to actually have value on this earth. Mm. I don't want to just. A lot of people just live day to day. They, they don't do anything. They don't help anyone. They don't travel. They. I want to have value. I want to be a statement mm. to people. To people to look back and be like, he, made he was a, a good guy, or yeah. he made a difference. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, you can only do so much, but if you can do your little bit, that's yeah. what. That's all you can do. Hundred percent, bro. All right, two to go. What's next for Jackson Tippett? Man, there's a lot on the plate right now. A yeah. lot. Um, fitness retreats. Yeah. Um, I'm actually about to announce one in two weeks. Yeah, that's cool. Um, in Thailand. That'd be cool. Um, doing some guest speaking. Um, so I've got two guest events coming up in a month. Hopefully that leads to me speaking at schools, which is my end goal. It's yeah. just very hard to get into. Um, I'd like to buy a a villa in either Thailand or Bali and then Airbnb it out. Yeah, that's cool. And then I'd also like to buy my own property on the Gold Coast. So we float between the two. And then, you know, obviously keep building my business higher and higher um, to the point where I'm actually not working. It's just residual income. Yeah. And then travel the world. Yeah. That would be goals. That's goals, bro. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> All right, final question. What are you grateful for? Man, I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my family. And I'm grateful to be able to help change people's lives. I'm real, bro. Smashed it. All right, brother. Easy. Thank you for coming on, bro. Appreciate Thanks. your time. Let's do it again, eh? Absolutely. Thanks, See everyone, guys. for listening.